Welcome to the Web Design Business Podcast with your host, Josh Hall, helping you build a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hello, friends. Welcome into episode 222, where in this episode, I'm very excited to have one of my very good friends and colleagues in the WordPress and Divi realm onto the show to talk about where things are at with WordPress, with Divi, with even other website builders, and where things are headed moving forward as we get closer to the end of 2022 and as we head into the next year here. So I'm so excited to welcome back onto the podcast, David Blackman. David is the CEO of WP Zone, which is actually a new brand that was formerly Divi Space and Aspen Grove Studios. If you've been in the Divi community at all, you probably know those two brands very well. Uh, he and his colleague, Corey Jenkins, have been OGs in the WordPress and Divi community. And these two brands, as you'll hear, they recently kind of rebranded under the umbrella of WP Zone. And I wanted to intentionally have David on to talk about where things are at. Because one thing I've known about David and one thing I've realized is he tends to look at the future very tactfully. And when I saw that he kind of rebranded to this brand of WP Zone, I was like, hmm, interesting. I want to talk to him to see what's going on. And that's exactly what we do in this episode. I think it was really cool to just get a fresh, casual take on where things are at with WordPress in particular. And a lot of these other builders like Divi, Elementor, Oxygen, and where some of these other builders stack up uh, and where things are headed. So I can't wait for, for you to get a feel to help you in your business. And even those of you who don't use WordPress, I still think this will be a really interesting conversation to help you with the platforms that you use and trust and recommend. And it should go without saying, I am still a Divi user. I talk about this in this interview, but I have always trusted my website on Divi and WordPress. Those are still my two favorite platforms on the WordPress side. I also love Circle for community and, and online memberships. Uh, but my gosh, it was so good to catch up with David and hear what's working for them and where things are at and where things are headed. Now, one thing I do want to say real quick before we dive into this episode, you can always go to free forums and free Facebook groups and any other online groups for community support to kind of keep up to date on the latest trends of WordPress. But you get what you get when you get free. And if you didn't know, my web design club, which is where I do all of my coaching, it's my coaching community. The second word in that is really important. It is also an incredible community. I have not done a good enough job recently of talking about how incredible the people are in my web design club, but I want to invite you to join because it's an incredible place to stay up and up on what's going on with WordPress, Divi, other builders. And it is a community of people using all different platforms. So I wanted to make sure you're aware of that. If you'd like to check it out, you can go to joshhall.co slash coaching. There is currently a special offer for you to join my web design club. You can go to joshhall.co slash coaching. Give it a whirl. Come in, say hey, see what it's all about. See if it'll be a good fit for you to be a great resource. And speaking of great resources, here's David Blackman, CEO of WP Zone. Let's talk about WordPress, where things are at, where things are headed, and have some fun. David, welcome back onto the podcast, man. It has been a minute since we got to hang out. It has been a minute, Josh. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me, my friend. I'm trying to remember when your first episode went live. I mean, I think it's been at least a year and a half or so, at least oh, since we connected, maybe, yeah. maybe a couple of years since we connected. Of course, we're connected on social media. I, I always yeah. follow what you're up to. Um, well, I was going to say Divi Space, but I know a lot of changes are happening on that end of yeah. things, which I'm very curious about. But I thought it would be so cool to to get a chance to reconnect and also just talk about the landscape of WordPress Divi, all the tools that we're using, because I've seen a lot of changes and shifts and right. I've still used Divi exclusively. I still love WordPress, but I've also really gotten into Circle as a platform right. for online community and then actually courses next. So, um, yeah, I'm so excited to see where you guys are at and what you've seen in the industry and everything. So before we dive in, uh, I was going to typically I have people say where they're at, but you're I mean, you're a digital nomad. That's still the lifestyle you live, right? <laughs> it is. I, I am a digital nomad. And currently, if you can see my hat, it it looks like it's spelled Ure, Colorado. But I found out when I got here that they actually pronounce it 
you ray oh uh, you ray so fancy no why i'm like what the heck it that makes no sense but i've been corrected quite a few times because my brain wants to enunciate the word as it's spelled and you know how it is you know in good old america we can change things up and it can it can look one way and be a totally different word. So, yeah, that was one of the right. worst pieces of advice I ever got in school was just say say it like it's pronounced or say <laughs> yeah, it like it's spelled. Right. Uh, no, that doesn't seem to be right at all now. Right. Yeah, totally. Now, so, I'm curious, yeah. David, on your travels, I love asking this question now. When you're in your travels and you meet somebody at an RV park or wherever you're at yeah. uh, and they say, so, Mr. David, what do you do? What do you, what do you tell them? What do I tell them? Oof, um, whatever I want. <laughs> no, to Corey, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. You say um, I have a guy named Corey who does everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I tell them, you know, we own a, uh, I run a WordPress, uh, plugin and theme development company. Um, you know, product development company and it, and it's based around WordPress. Uh, we're technically software developers, I guess. So sometimes I'll, lead with that because we do have full stack developers on our team and we do build outside of the realm of WordPress. So, but it's not our niche. Our niche is still primarily, you know, WordPress in the WordPress space with themes, um, plugins and courses for WordPress. Yeah. And that perfect segue into one of the things I'm so curious about is recently you guys rebranded to WP zone yeah. and I'm kind of curious, what was the impetus of kind of widening the reach into WordPress in general, as opposed to, to getting out of just the Divi space brand? Well, from a, from a, a business standpoint, I, I've always felt like diversification is really, really smart. I've always kind of followed the philosophy of I want at least five different streams of revenue. And, you know, Divi... I love Divi. We're a Divi company. Uh, we'll be a Divi company until Divi is probably no more. But I wanted to branch out into WordPress as a whole because, you know, basically just from a business standpoint for protection, you know, I mean, we're a third party product creator for a third party product for WordPress as opposed to being, you know, a, um, a direct developer on on the WordPress platform, which we do. We do plugins for WooCommerce is is one of our niches. And we just wanted to kind of kind of spread out and I guess if I'm honest, just protect ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're we're solvent for the future and we're not, you know, one day, you know, Nick, our good buddy over there at Elegant Theme says, Deuces, I'm right. retiring and <laughs> this is no more. So um yeah. Well, yeah, you're a seasoned yeah. entrepreneur and a seasoned business owner. It's one reason I always enjoy getting a chance to chat with you, David, because you are business savvy, to say the least, in my mind. So yeah. I think it's a great reminder and, and maybe a great thought for people who are new into the business game that you do need to have like future contingencies yeah. in place ju just in case. And I don't know, was this caused by anything? Like, was there anything that made you guys feel like maybe... We need to, I, I don't know. I haven't honestly looked at the numbers as far as the um, the amount of Divi users versus Elementor and Oxygen and other builders. Yeah. Um, I've seen an increase in a lot of other mm -hmm. themes rise in popularity as right. well. But w did any of that add to it or was it just time to add this part as a, as a future thing, kind of thing? No, it, it, I don't really think that that really affected it. Um, I think that, you know, our long term goals, you know, needed to line up with what we're working on and stuff. And our long term goals is, well, WordPress powers, what, 43, 44 percent of the Internet currently. Um, WordPress isn't really going anywhere. But again, Divi could go somewhere. And, and I'm kind of a, a proponent of, you know, making sure that you, um you know, kind of, kind of protect yourself. And, and it wasn't like, oh, we saw the numbers dip with Divi or anything. Divi's still going really, really strong and, and the company is still doing really good and stuff currently. But we wanted, we had a bigger vision for the whole, you know, mm. for the future. Um, we wanted to 
primarily focus, and I guess I'll give you a tease, you know, somewhat of a tease of what's coming post, you know, at the latter end of this year, we're going to dive back into development on uh, a, a SaaS platform that we're launching for the e-commerce analytics for data. And, you know, several of our plugins, uh, Product Sales Report Pro, Export Order Items Pro, are some of the top WordPress plugins for analyzing your data on your e-commerce, your WooCommerce store. Well, we wanted to, I, as a e-commerce store owner, couldn't really, there wasn't really any um, anything out in the marketplace that would allow me to get the data that I wanted to go as granular or as deep as I wanted for recurring subscriptions and, you know, churn, all of these, these things that happen naturally occurring. And we're, you know, the data that I want, my team has to pull in like spreadsheets and stuff. And we've got to download the database, pull it into a spreadsheet, analyze it, just do a bunch of rigmarole. So, you know, we kind of want to focus on, e-commerce platforms and not just WooCommerce, easy digital downloads. I don't know if you, I'm pretty sure you've probably seen where they're partnering with SiteGround to, it looks like to possibly take on WooCommerce. Oh, so I didn't even, see that. No, okay. they may even be doing like physical products as well. I would assume. Um, uh, s- secret side note, the, the reason I do this podcast, the absolute yeah. main reason is to stay up to date and just hear from people. <laughs> so I don't have to read news articles anymore. Yeah, <laughs> Plus right, I right. have a young family and a baby on the way or at yeah, this time, Josh, you're busy, dude. Yeah, I'm busy at this time. I'll be have, I'll be sleep deprived with a newborn. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love hearing what everyone yeah. is, is, is up to date on. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind of where we want to focus. We want to, you know, I think I think the future obviously is online. More and more uh, e-commerce based sales, whether it's digital, physical products or services mm-hmm. is the future. More and more people are going to be online. So I'd love to be positioned in a place where we can provide services for them to, you know, do better in business online and stuff with their e-commerce gotcha. stores and stuff. So now this might be out of what you know, but the the thing with easy digital downloads and SiteGround is that still going to be on WordPress exclusively? Uh, like I can't imagine wanting to take on WooCommerce if you're going to stay on their platform since WooCommerce. Yeah, is honestly, on I don't know. I'm assuming that they're wanting to take on WooCommerce with this with this partnership and. Full transparency. I just found out about this yesterday. Okay. So, and, and it, it, it excited me because we're on EDD, you know, gotcha. we're very familiar with the platform. You know, we've, we've got tools and stuff that we use internally to manage our own business that we've created and stuff to get this data as opposed to having to, you know, pull in all of the data out of your database and, yeah do all this crazy stuff. So I got really excited, like, oh, wow. Plus I see potential and opportunity in that marketplace. If they do come into the WordPress space or not, a lot of our products we could pour it over into, you know, EDD is that, that we already have for WooCommerce. So it's just yeah. kind of a, a natural expansion and stuff. Well, it makes sense that you guys would really want to position yourself even further into the online store and e-commerce right. realm. Yeah. Cause yeah, I mean, that's definitely where thing. I mean, I, I had one of my good buddies, Dan Sheard of a company called Velstar. They're based in the UK. They're Shopify exclusive. Right. Um, I had him on the podcast a while back and he even said, 2020 expedited online stores by like 10, yeah. like 10 times faster than it would have right. been. Uh, or he basically said, we're propelled where we are now that we probably would have been in five to 10 years. So it's online shopping is, is by far. I mean, I've even seen a ton of changes yeah. in how things work over the last, you know, even just a couple of years. So yeah, I think it uh, was a, I think it was a huge eye opener, especially for small businesses who were on the fence and like, Ooh, you know, even though let's, 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 let's face it, you know, we're, this is an online world. Even if they're a small business in a small town, I think that over the last couple of years with the pandemic and stuff, it just really opened their eyes to make them realize the importance of being able to transition and stuff. I'm sure nobody ever saw, you know, businesses shutting down in the U S and, and closing, you know, because they were forced to, uh, even businesses that had been in business for 
ever and who were well known in the town had to pivot really quick and stuff yeah. because uh their doors were closed and I personally am very passionate about um educating people on the importance of owning their own digital real estate because I really feel like you know it's going to be the equivalent of owning physical land in in the real world as you and I know it right now i think that that real estate's going to be super important so wordpress is a great platform for that because a self-hosted wordpress website you own you know and you control and you can you can do what you need to do with it and stuff so i actually yeah. wanted to ask you about that how do you think wordpress has done over the past few years stacking up against squarespace or webflow or some of these other platforms that may have decent tools but at the end of the day you're renting you're renting yeah. your space from them well i don't think it even compares um now if the only place that it that it probably wins slightly is on the user friendly side of things. So like a novice who knows nothing about, you know, online or how to build a website or anything, it may have an edge, you know, in regards to ease of getting online quickly and stuff. But I would dispute that because I did a video during the pandemic to show people how fast they could get online with an e-commerce website with WordPress by using child themes, mm. you know? So um, I think it doesn't even compare, you know, when you look at the aspect of you don't own it. So I've got some friends that were heavily invested in Pinterest, for example, and Pinterest pivoted, did something. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I know nothing about Pinterest other than people pin things on it. But I've got good friends in the RV space who are full-time digital nomads and they've built businesses up and, and they built a business up around Pinterest and Pinterest changed their business model and stuff. Mm. And they they lost their revenue overnight. Yeah. And it was just like a perfect, you know, example of, you know, when you invest all of your time, energy, and money into a quote unquote rented platform, a platform that you don't own and you don't control. And they change their business model. Look, these these big platforms like Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, they're not driven by the consumers. We'd like to think they are, but they're driven by the board members or the stockholders who own, you know, they want a return on their investment. So if it's not working the way they think it should and they want to make some changes, guess what? They're making some changes and you're not in their mind about, oh, is this right. going to hurt the small businesses or anybody that's on our platform? They don't care. They're about it's, making money. It's why yeah. WordPress, I think, has stood the test of time for the last, what, 12 or 13 years since it really yeah. started getting some notoriety is the right. reason it is almost half the Internet is because it is such a again, open source tool, meaning yeah. you can use it however you want. You don't like right. you own it, you own your content you can put it on different hosting companies. Right. It is also very community driven, which yeah, is a totally. really big, I mean, I don't, I'm sure there are groups for Squarespace and stuff. But I don't know how many people are going to the, you know, yearly Weebly meetup. I don't know. Maybe people, you know what I mean? Like many Do they people have a are. yearly Weebly meetup? Right. That's kind yeah. of funny. <laughs> Somebody probably knows is going to email me, which is fine. Let me know. I'm not hating right. on them. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that yeah. community is strong like it is with WordPress. And that's the, but right. that's the benefit of it. It's, it's people driven, which yeah. adds to profit when you do things right. It's Absolutely. also one reason that you and I love Divi. They are such yeah. a community empowered yeah. type of tool. It's also why my new favorite tool is Circle. I don't know yeah. how much you know about Circle, David, but I don't. I don't know much about it. I would love to hear more about it. I know that it's you know a social platform, basically where you can have your community and stuff. So it's becoming much more for sure. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's so I run my student center, which is a support group, and then my web design club, which is my high tier, right. my membership, as of yeah. right now, and it's all run through Circle, but. They they also made it open source, so you can take the code and manipulate it. You can also embed really? it in websites if you want. So instead of having a Facebook group, you can have spaces in a in a circle platform. They're at, they're adding course uh, functionality here soon, which I'm very very excited about. Dude, um, so uh, yeah, it's really so you'll have you'll be able to have coaching. 
community and courses all in one place without separate sign-ons, which is super exciting. And but, it's open source? And you can get into it. Yeah, yeah. Like that, It's a little oh, wow. bit different with they do host it. So I should say like yeah. you can't use Circle on SiteGround or yeah. something. Yeah, but gotcha. they're really open. It's from the same folks from Teachable. So they're very okay. similar to Divi and WordPress, very community right. driven. And they've gotcha. intentionally like built up a community around the product to get real-time feedback. So anyway... I say all that to say this is a good point that when you are deciding on the tools that you're going to use, would you agree with me, David, and saying you've got to look at the company and you got to look at the community behind it because those Absolutely. two things are going to really determine where it goes in the future. Yeah, 100 percent. And I don't want it to sound like, you know, Josh and I are saying, hey, you got to get on WordPress today and. My main thing is ed education and helping people understand the importance of owning that platform. Have a plan. You know, if Weebly or Squarespace or someplace, Kajabi, Shopify, whatever the platform is, is your starting point, make sure that you plan on your roadmap to be able to migrate to a platform that you eventually own. Because uh, let's face it, a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs, which we're in, kind of in that community and stuff, and they, they kind of look up to us, you know, for advice and stuff, they may not have deep pockets. And let's face it, even with child themes and, you know, a lot of the tools, wonderful tools that come with WordPress, you still need to have some type of development chops or at least have somebody that can help you to to take care of some things. And if you can't financially support that, just make sure that you have a plan in place to, you know, move to that down the road and stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, that's great sage advice for sure. Yeah. Have a plan. Maybe, maybe not a built out plan B, but at least have an idea of like, okay, should something happen here? What's, what's the next step? Um, I'm kind of curious. We've talked about some of the benefits with WordPress and Divi and stuff. I actually want to maybe look at both of those one by one. What are some things that you feel like WordPress maybe hasn't done a great job on recently, or maybe could do better at? Well, and I'm not going to send this to Matt Mullenweg or something, uh, but well, that's I'm just okay. kind of Matt, curious. If, Matt, <laughs> if Matt's watching you and me, Josh, hey, Matt, what's that's happening, good. dude? Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you. You know, <laughs> um, here's what I will say. I, you know, I guess because I am a, a WordPress product company and I've been in WordPress for almost 10 years, I do have a good understanding of how hard it is to move, especially when you have as many customers as WordPress has. And, you know, we're, we're a fraction, I mean, a very small fraction of the customer base that they actually have, but everything that they do has the, a ripple effect It's going to affect all of the users on WordPress. So as much as we'd like to say, Hey, why doesn't WordPress do this or that? And how come they're moving so slow? They really have to think about what is this impact this is going to have on the entire world, basically, 43 True. or 44% of the internet is built on WordPress. I, last time I checked, number two was less than 5% of the internet. Oh, so no it's, kidding. It's not even close to, you know, and I want to say it was Weebly or Squarespace, one of them. Um, and so when you have that type of responsibility, it does make it hard. What would I love to see or what do I think? I think that they, they made a really good um, decision to move into like the React base, you know, Gutenberg type kind of framework. But I think I would have loved to have seen more or would love to see more of the page builder aspects of the divvies, the elementors, the beaver builders, the oxygen, ease of use to where that market share can continue to grow. And I'm sure Matt and his whole team knows this and they're looking at it. Um, what would it, you know, take to make it possible to, um, you know, make the ease of use for even more small businesses or side hustlers want to be, you know, entrepreneurs and stuff to create with this platform and stuff. Um, that's where I kind of think I wish that it would, you know, kind of 
And maybe it's because I'm a page builder guy. And maybe it's because Josh is a page builder guy. We know the power of this thing and, and the ease of use, you know, for the end users and stuff. So it is tricky. It's such a double edged sword, because if you make things really easy to use, usually that means you're going to limit some of right. the other options potentially. Yeah. And I think that's why I do like having Divi and these other builder options. I guess the caveat to that might be like, if WordPress gets to the point where it is so built out natively, do right. you think there's a time where Divi, Elementor, and these visual builders would potentially just not be able to compete with WordPress itself? I, I don't think so. I don't think that that time's ever going to come. Um, just because the the companies like Divi, Elementor, and stuff, they can move a lot quicker than WordPress based mm, on yeah. basically what I just said. So... Um, they're going to be, it, it's kind of my philosophy in business and stuff. So, you know, Nick Roach, Elegant Themes, we're friends. We've, we've been friends with these guys for years. And, and I knew when I started creating third party products for Divi, for example, that there was a possibility that, you know, one day some of these products may be integrated into the theme itself. And I've never had a problem with that. I've been okay with that because I knew that if there was a need right now, that I was going to be able to move quicker and um, and benefit from that for however long it took Elegant Themes to get to that place where they could integrate this functionality or feature mm -hmm. into their theme or platform. And, and it takes time. It takes a long time. They have yeah. their customer base, number one. WordPress theme in the world. They almost still are, a, right? I think David yeah, is. Or, uh, yeah, Divi is almost, right? almost a million paid users. You know, that's a lot of people using that platform. They can't just say, oh, let me grab this, let me grab this, let me, because it's right. going to affect every single user on the platform. So, so I know that they can't move as quick. So I don't think that any of these page builders or anything are ever in any danger of WordPress, like coming out with, with, you know, uh, comparable platforms on, on, on WordPress itself to basically kill. Yeah. Nor, I, I don't think Matt Mullenweg, he's, he's smart enough to understand the value of the community and he doesn't want to cut their heads off, you know, because the community, as you know, is one of the huge driving forces of the platform itself. So, well, it's a good point. WordPress by itself is just, a great platform to build off of and making right. your own. That's what has made it what yeah. it is without being a fully fledged, like built out thing where again, like I said earlier, you're limited to what you can do with it. So right. you're, you're, you're limiting the creativity and, and economic options for all the people behind it who make more with it. Yeah, uh, so that's totally. great. That's relieving to hear. And, and realistically, I mean, I would love, I, I hope to get Matt on the show uh, yeah. at some point in the future, future here, because I'd love to hear his thoughts on this, but I don't know how much the team at WordPress would want to <laughs> try to figure out like what Divi has learned in the past 10 years, for example, or right. elements, or you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. Nick and the team at Elegant Themes have worked tirelessly with people, uh, a big company of people all over the world for 10 right. years, making Divi what it is today. So right. totally. you, I imagine you wouldn't want to recreate that wheel yeah. you know, in a way. Totally. 100%. Well, what about Divi? Let's turn the uh, question to like, we've talked about some things Divi does well, but uh, similarly, what do you think are some things that maybe they've missed out on, or maybe they haven't capitalized on over, even, especially over the past few years? Cause I've seen a lot of people quite frankly, leave Divi to go to Elementor in particular. Yeah. yeah and I full transparency, I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with Elementor or any of the other page builders. We do build products for it because it's, uh, we have a hosting platform that caters to page builders. Mm -hmm. So we did make sure that our, you know, so from a programmatic standpoint, you know, we, we function with these platforms and stuff, but, um, I don't really know if I can say that there's anything that Nick and the team have done that that they're not doing that they should have done comparatively to these other platforms. I think they've done really, really well, honestly, with their, their approach, their, uh, the way that they've um, kind of handled their user base and their growth and stuff. And they didn't allow themselves to get 
to change the direction of, of, of where they knew their company was going based on outside influences. Mm, so, yeah. and I'm going to say this. So they all say, Hey, we're number one. We're number one. We're number one. Well, from a business standpoint, I look at it from, okay, paid users, you know, who has the most paid users? You know, I, I get it. it. It's, it's, it's wonderful to put out a free product. Everybody's going to download free and to tout, you know, Hey, we have all these numbers, all these users and stuff. We're number one. But when you, when you look at the true, you know, thing that matters is like, who are the companies really invest in? Who are the people really invest in their money in, you know? Yeah. And I think elegant themes has done a really fantastic job of, um, continuing to improve the product, you know, sharing the roadmap with the community, embracing the community, trying to help the community grow as it grows. What's, what's the saying? A rising tide raises all ships. And I think Elegant Themes has done a fantastic job with that philosophy. Whether or not that's Nick's philosophy, it's what they're doing because they have, I mean, look at all of the third-party product creators just around the Divi theme who have built businesses, raised families, um, hired people, you know, the economic development just from that little ecosystem has been, has been incredible. I know it's yeah, I changed wonder, our family life. Yeah. I wonder if like Elementor has, uh, any, like a big set of third party developers. I, I don't even know. Well, here's what I will say in the beginning, and it may have changed by now. But in the beginning and stuff, Elementor, so first of all, Elementor was, um, I want to say that they were, you know, a concept that they pitched venture capitalists and they got a ton of money to build this product out, which is great. But when you go that route, they want to see return on investment. They want to protect their investment. So they're not like Nick where it's like, Come here, let's go hang out and spend the night in an Airbnb together and stuff. Gotcha. Right. I remember when we were going to create products, because we looked at it. We were like, should we create, you know, third party products for Elementor? And they were very adamant about you can't use their name, you couldn't use their brand, you know, their trademark stuff. So there's and no Elementor like, space or Elementor life. Yeah, they would they would <laughs> cease and desist right then and there, you gotcha. know. And, and, and that mentality is like well, wait a minute. Do I want to? And we just chose not even to go down that road. I think if they would have had the wherewithal or the the understanding of the value of that community and what it could really do for your business and stuff, you know, maybe would be different. Yeah. And if it was more individually owned or group owned as opposed to, you know, business venture capitalists and stuff who are looking for a return on investment pretty quickly and stuff, it, it might have been different. That's fascinating. That's very interesting. I think that goes back to the importance of looking at a community and the yeah. company itself. Uh, as far Because the reality is, particularly if you are a web designer or a web design business owner, like the majority of everyone listening to this right now, yeah. the tools you choose are going to run your business. Right. So True. like you can't underestimate the value of making sure you choose really good tools. Otherwise, it, like if you, for example if I had built my business on Joomla, uh, right. I'd probably have way <laughs> less hair than I have right now, first of all. But like, what if I'm like, okay, now I'm going to switch over to WordPress, but I've got, you know, dozens of clients on Joomla. Yeah. Yes, you can migrate them one by one. But uh, I mean, that's the, that's the risk of technology now. Yeah. So it is a risk. Anything you choose could one day change, but yeah. um, it is really worthwhile making sure that you look at all the components behind these tools, right. because I totally agree, David. There's... Even that fact, like somebody getting investments for a tool, that's going to change the way they run the community or allow other people to to make the product something other bigger than it is. WordPress and Divi are so similar, I feel like. Where yeah, they are. They're, you yeah, know, totally. there was like community from the start. And it was like, again, yeah. the rising tide thing. Like everyone kind of rose together. Yeah, I think because uh, I was here in the very beginning uh, of Divi and was, I don't know maybe the third or fourth member of the Divi theme users Facebook group, you know, and, and I saw that, you know, I just witnessed the power of that. And I think 
Nick was just really, really wise in not stamping that out and not protecting his new baby that he was creating and stuff that he he had um and when you have venture capitalists and they're in a boardroom over there and they're looking at ones and zeros and dollars and they're not looking at the people and understanding their audience and stuff they're just like okay what how can we get we need to get more money and stuff we got to yeah. protect this it's it's a totally different vibe and energy you know and people People love that communal aspect. You know, it's huge. It's, it's, it's very, very important. Stuff, well, it's also so. the distinction you made a little bit ago is huge with like, okay, maybe they have more downloads of the free version of something, but yeah, how right. many paid users are paying for this or have paid this? <laughs> That's right. I've experienced that in the course world because I've known some uh, people who do like marketing and website courses and stuff. And they'll be like, yeah, I have 50,000 plus students. And I'm like, whoa, 50,000. <laughs> yeah. You must then be I, have a yacht somewhere. <laughs> then I go, yeah. Then I go to their site and it's, oh, you have a free course. I yeah. see. I see. So when I yeah. say I have 1300 plus students, they are paying yeah. students, not uh, absolutely. It's yeah, huge. It's a big difference. Totally. It's, difference. it's kind of a, uh, in this world, it's really easy to get wrapped up in quantity and, and numbers, but have you experienced as a seasoned online entrepreneur, have you experienced the need to like sit back and just focus on quality over quantity and not oh, pay attention to the vanity metrics that can come with some of this stuff? Oh man, I, 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 that's a great question. And I'm honestly, I'm glad you asked it because you're sitting here talking about, you know, how many students you have. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, how many students do we have? You know, I honestly couldn't tell you the exact number or ballpark number. I think I know, you know, um, but it's never been about, you know, build, in building my business and stuff and my philosophy is it's, it's never been about um, the dollar signs. Now, don't get me wrong. We've got to all got to eat. We've got to keep the lights on. We've got to keep the roof over our head. But I've always believed in the philosophy of just trying to be a service, help the audience that I'm that I'm serving and the money comes. And guess what? it has. It has come. So, um, yeah, the vanity metrics mean nothing. It's, it's funny because I'm in this personal place where I've been the last few years and stuff kind of really evaluating what I want what I want from the public's facing side of things for me personally, you know, I, I, um, I travel around in my Airstream full time. I hit the road in May, you know, for the first time in a couple of years because of the pandemic. And I absolutely love it. I love going, I love being in nature. Um, and I thought for a long time that I wanted to share that journey with the world and stuff. And, this past summer, I've almost not shared anything mm. with the world. It wasn't intentional like, oh, I'm going to not post anything. But I, I was telling people I've had the best summer I've ever had, I think, in my life. So I think we can get tied up in, in things that aren't really, really important like the vanity metrics and stuff. And if we invest in more in, in things that are important, like people and relationships and the time we have and the way we spend it and stuff like, you know, I, I, I love watching your journey and stuff with your kids and your wife. And from a friend standpoint, it's big. Cause I like, it brings me joy. I like to see it and stuff. So I get the balance and, and I guess that's kind of been my, my mantra this, this past summer is like there needs to be balance in all things and stuff. So I don't yeah. know if I answered the question, Josh, but, uh, I've well, been no, I, I like that. Those are some like personal thoughts against the idea of just like sharing every positive thing right. or sharing every win or sharing numbers. And yeah. I think those things can be important, especially if you're in a position of influence and you want people yeah. to, to get a certain thing. But I think the idea of just focusing on you and not right. needing to share if you don't want to, or not right. needing to display certain things is, is important. And it is good to just think about, I, I found in my case, like I think about my family, I think about what we need and what I want to take home 
monetarily yeah. in my business to yeah. live comfortably and have enough to invest and do things and get a pool here one day. Like yeah. those are the things I'm thinking about. And then everything on top of that, I can build my business around whatever the heck I want to do. And right. it's funny. It's like the worst question ever is for somebody to ask, how many clients have you worked with? Cause who cares? Like, yeah. it, it, like, would it be better if I worked with a, uh, like a thousand thousand dollar clients or would it be better if I worked with a hundred ten thousand dollar clients? I don't know the math on those, but you know what I mean? Like it doesn't do. matter the number of, yeah. of clients. And I've actually, this is hitting home so big time with me right now. And I think a lot of my students who are offering five, 10, $15,000 packages. Now right. you are going to get less clients. So right. <laughs> don't worry about getting a ton of clients. Good news is you don't have to sell as much. Better news is you can have deeper relationships with your clients. The really better news is that they'll buy from you over and over and over again, but you're going right. to have less clients. So I think it's a really important message to, to help. I'm, I'm, I'm even in the process right now of offering some higher end, like I'm building a mastery signature web design business yeah. program. Yeah. I'm not going to have 1300 students in that. Because yeah, it's a right. high ticket type of program. Yeah, but totally. So that's a metric like I've had to remem remind myself, remember, I'm good friends with like Daryl Wilson and Adam yeah. Prazer and these guys who have massive YouTube channels. I'm not yeah. going to have that with my setup. I have to right. always remind myself of that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I have, um, you know, a few things that I, you know, are important to me in understanding and stuff. It's like I, I've you know, I feel like we're all energy, you know, and we're all connected. And people always ask me, oh, I can't, I can't start that. Uh, somebody else is already doing that. There's too many people doing that. And, and I, I just want to tell them, you know, I want to say, hey, no, no, you can't, you got to quit thinking that way. That's not the proper way to think because we're all energy and we're on our own frequency. So if you've ever, somebody's ever told you something and you're like, eh, you know, and you just doesn't register. And then all of a sudden somebody else tells you the same exact thing. And you're like, oh, wow, man, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that with me. And like 10 other people have been telling you the same exact thing. Well, it's not because you're cut off from them. It's because you're on a different frequency energetically. So whether you call it your tribe, your community, your people, your family, your group or whatever, verbiage you put on it, we are like that. And we're more connected globally now than ever before in history, especially with the Internet. We're able to I'm sitting in Uray, Colorado. Josh is sitting in Ohio, you know, and we're having a conversation talking to you about WordPress and web development and stuff. But, you know, it even that frequency transcends the need or necessity to be in person. We don't need that. And I have always felt that way. It's like, oh, I had it happen this week. You know, a, a week ago, I went to a conference here. This is why I know about this place. I came to the RV Entrepreneur Summit Roundtable. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> which was which was really cool, you know. Awesome. It was a really small event. And there was this pretty big podcaster, you know, and he's in there and he's talking about his revenue and, you know. And I have like – I. I do a podcast, done a podcast for a long time, and um, it wasn't my business model to make revenue from, you know, ads and stuff like that. It's basically to, you know, educate users. And if they want to look at some of our other products, then they can, where the courses and stuff like that. And, you know, I have one of the biggest RV podcasters that's been a client and a really good friend of mine for five, six years now. And he's always telling me like this one specific thing about podcasting. And for whatever reason, I'm just never hearing him. And this guy was mm. just sitting in here in this room right next to where I am. And he shares the exact same thing that this friend's been telling me for five or six years. And, just my, whole differently. Mind, and my whole mind went, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a so. great point. I think it's also really, it's a really good point when it comes to the idea of website designers being like oversaturated. I've had a lot right. of people say like, well, there's just, there's a ton of web designers now, yeah. but one reason I'm extra passionate about zoning in on the business side of things, it's like, yes, a lot of people can design websites, but there aren't right. that many people who are successfully building a six figure freedom based business Correct. around That's web right. design. Totally. That is a very unique thing. And I did yeah. it. I've got a lot of colleagues who have done it, including yourself. Now yeah. a lot of my students are doing it. That's what has led me to feel like 
and, and this is something that I learned in my journey, you got to find like where you are uniquely positioned and right. it might be very similar to everything else, but what's unique about like your perspective and right. do that, add that like, Oh gosh, it's such a good point, David, particularly in website design, because yeah, a ton of people build websites, but you might have a perspective or you might know an industry that you came from that no one else knows as well. There's right. your lane. There is your yeah. option to to dive yeah. into that. Uh, so many ways that you can build something. Yeah, you can have quote unquote competition, but number one, you and I both subscribe to the idea of co-opetition which absolutely. I absolutely love. And there's no reason you can't jump into a crowded pool, but you know, do your own thing and make it uniquely yours. Absolutely. Totally. 100%. I mean, we're a perfect example. I mean, technically Josh, myself, and even Tim and I, who's my podcast co-host. <laughs> oh, we're all complete competition. We're, yeah. We're, we're all, all competitors. competitors. Yeah. You know, we're all going after the same audience for the most yeah. part. And yeah, it's just, there's, we're on our own frequency and the, and the to people yeah. that Josh connects with and that connects with Josh and you know, he gets to share his knowledge and, and myself and all the others, vice versa. The world has 7 billion people on here. You know, we're not getting all of them. One person is not getting Great all of point. the business. Yes. And as Great soon point. as you remember that it, it like takes the pressure away and you have, you don't have to worry about this person or that person or what they're doing. You just focus on what you're doing, the people that you're going to get it are attracted to you and your message and how you do things is going to, it's going to resonate with them and they're going to spend money with you. So, I think it's such an important thing to remember too. When you become a web designer or as somebody listening, who's been at it for a while, you're entering the next level, or maybe you're diving further into an online community and WordPress or whatever it is, you have got to look at those people as your support system. In your Absolutely. community, and you want to help them too. You you want to share totally. what you've learned, because they aren't the ones who are going to pay you unless That's you right. are a plugin creator or a child That's creator correct. or a course creator. Yeah. The people who are going to pay you are your clients. So right. I've this is such a great point when you're thinking about like the people you're going to interact with as a web designer and business owner. You're going to have the people beside you, and you're going to have the people who you want to become clients who to pay you. Right. So yeah. treat them like that. Like the, totally. David is not my enemy. Yes, yeah, we have right. some, we have some, uh, courses that are similar and some resources, but we also have our own lane of things and I'm not right. a plugin creator. And Tim right. is actually taking a deeper dive into the Divi, the Divi realm where you guys are kind of branching out a little bit. So we're right. all able to work together very well. Right. We're not paying each other, you know, like, right. That's well, right. I shouldn't say that I bought your products and Tim has bought, yeah. you know, I yeah. bought some of his, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally focus on the client. They, the, yeah. the, 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 your colleagues are not your competition. Troy That's Dean, right. I had him on the podcast a while back. He said, it was the same kind of statement that I've heard before, but the way Troy said it just hit me like a hammer across the head. And he same said, frequency, same frequency, <laughs> just a cooler, cooler accent. He has, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> but he said, you don't need to be the best web designer period. You just need yeah. to be the best web designer in your client sphere. And yeah. I was like, ah, oh, that's the perfect way to sum that up. Yeah. Like, you don't have to compete with every other web designer, you know, or even that's in the same city, but yeah. your little networking group, if you can get 20 or 30 people to be your clients through your networking like that, and they right. like you more than, you know, this fancy developer who's not a great communicator, boom, yeah. you're good. That's your client. They'll pay over and over and over again. Absolutely. 100%. 150%. You're speaking my language, Josh. <laughs> the idea of competition <laughs> now, do you feel like... Um, do you feel like with the rise of different theme builders and, 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 and let's face it, online communities now, we were not all centralized on Facebook like it was even Correct. when I started the Divi Facebook group that I run, um, even back in 2016. It's much more segmented now in different places. Do you feel like that's added to competition more or do you still feel like co-opetition is, is still prevalent as it was? No, I, I, I think co-opetition is... Um is still really good. I think all these different, you know, places and stuff, people are just kind of finding where their place is. And I think that's important in any business or, or life in general on a personal level. You know, we need to find out where we thrive the most. And if, if we're, we thrive on Facebook, if that's our 
jam, then that's where we need to be. And that's where we're going to be and stuff. But like, so I'll, I'll give you an example for me personally and stuff. Um, you know, I thought for a long time that I wanted to be on all these, these platforms, sharing all this knowledge, doing all this stuff. And I just, I never have been, you know, it's never been my thing. Well, why is that? Why do, why do I not? It's not because I can't, it's not because I don't have the knowledge. Um, but this summer or this year, I jumped on TikTok <laughs> and for whatever reason, that platform just like resonated with me. It was easy. Really? It was, oh, it was amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like, uh, I wanted to do everything with this, this thing that's recording my face right now, my phone. I wanted to be able to edit everything and do everything mobile because I'm traveling. So space sure. is important. Yeah. I'm in a 23 foot airstream. I live in 144 square feet, Josh, 144. Can you imagine that? I think that's like, that's a section of my home office that I'm in closet, right now. <laughs> probably in your, in your house, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I absolutely love it. Now, you know, that minimalist, minimalistic and, you know, I just wanted, so I think that I like the aspect that there's multiple places and stuff for people to kind of find their jam because, you know, if, if Instagram's not your thing, if Facebook's not your thing, if YouTube's not your thing, if whatever, keep going until you find your thing because yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a perfect prime example. You know, I just have loved that platform for whatever reason. It's resonated with me. That's and interesting. I'm, I'm going to be sharing some WordPress stuff there, you know, so quick, short, Things, WordPress tips, WP Zone, you know, on our TikTok channel when we launch it and stuff, I'm going to do it. I started on a personal level just doing some some stuff that, uh, you know, I, I wanted to do that some people thought, oh, you, you should you should probably do this, David. You might help some people. So well, it's that's a great, why I started doing it. It's a great tip to align yourself with like what you're comfortable with. Or I, mean, I yeah. do recommend getting out of your comfort zone, particularly yeah. those getting on camera, but you can align your marketing efforts with what you like to do. Yeah, and, totally. Uh, we've been, this is, we're beating a dead horse with this statement, but like if you do all the things and try to be everywhere for everybody, you're going to, burnout and it's yeah. not going to be sustainable. Yeah. You definitely need to get to a point where you get really good at one platform and then get some help generally to, to kind of like delegate the rest. I'm doing that now with my social media. Yeah. I, I've enjoyed my time on Instagram. So I'm there a lot more now. Um, yeah. So Facebook and Insta are my two, but um, mm. it's only because I'm able to like not do everything now. Uh, I, I, I had to catch myself spending too much time on Instagram in particular Whereas like, this is just not, it's obviously not supernatural to me. I still don't quite understand the difference between a reel and a story. Like, I don't know how it all works together exactly perfectly. I'm like 82 years old when I'm on Instagram, but there are people who know <laughs> way better than I do. You know, what I can right. do though is have conversations and share what I know and share my processes and share my experience. So I'm doing what I do, get some help with the rest. I think it's an important message for folks who are trying to figure out how to market their business, but you don't want yeah. to be doing all the things to everybody. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to do all the things. And here, Josh, I'll make it really simple for you. The difference between stories and reels and all that stuff. It ain't. So TikTok past Facebook, number one website in the world. You know, I mean, that was huge. Well, what are they, you know, Instagram did the reels. They're all just competing. YouTube's got shorts, you know, and they realize, oh, this one over here is doing this. We got to add that into our platform, too. It's not like there's any big secret of like, you know, why they're doing this in their platform. They're competitors. They're doing what we're saying, you know, don't do. Don't worry about your competitors and stuff. And yeah. they're business people, again, run by people that need to make money in boardrooms and stuff. And, um, and that's why, you know, there's YouTube shorts now and reels and, you know, it's because this thing called TikTok came along and just said, Hey, you know what, here's our lane. This is where we're going to do. We're going to allow people to come on, create the short form content, blast it out there. And it just blew up. And yeah. It's funny though, like it, so. with YouTube shorts, I haven't really 
I haven't dove into that too much, but from what I've heard, I actually recently had uh, one of my mentors, Pat Flynn, on the show to talk yeah. to YouTube. And he even said, like, shorts kind of fizzled out because it just became a knockoff of TikTok. Or, yeah. Or generally, it's like if you're if you're running your own thing and then you try to do something that somebody else is doing, it's never going to be as good. And no. maybe that goes back to like our, our talk with like WordPress trying to create a visual builder. It's yeah. probably going to be absolute. It'll be like Divi, you know, point one, you know, you know, yeah. like it's going to be version exactly. one of whatever somebody else has already capitalized on. Totally. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I love yeah, that I think- idea. I love that idea of just having particularly social media. Like when I think about it, I think of Facebook being a little more community minded, more discussion based Instagram or picture based. I know they're really pushing video. I'm not on yeah. TikTok, but I know TikTok is more video Vid- entertainment yeah. based. Um, LinkedIn, more networking based, more connection based. Twitter, more thought based, more witty based. You know, like there's like all these yeah. different, at least in my mind with the main socials, yeah. that's how I'm viewing all these different places. Well, I think what I realize, especially with TikTok, is it's probably the most granular platform and learning platform that's out there. And that's why it, it's so visited and powerful. Most people think that it's it's just about funny, quick videos and funny, funny stuff because that's what people share, you know. But the reality is, is it's my experience is it's the most easily searchable, granular platform if I want to go learn about WordPress, I can, mm. I can dive down that rabbit hole and stuff. If I want to learn about whatever medicine, the, the, everything that you can think of, they've, they've found a way. And maybe that's why I, I like it so much. Cause it's not so, you know, just, just focused. It's, you know, and their algorithms are pretty on point because they start feeding you the things that you're really, really passionate about. So me being in nature, hiking, traveling, um, technology, um, you know, mental health, these kinds of things that are important in my life. Those are, you know, positivity and optimism and stuff. Those are the things that are getting served to me. Occasionally, every now and then I'll get the, um, you know, super funny video. And guess what? I freaking love those two, <laughs> man. They're, they're, well, they're great. <laughs> damn it, David. Don't make me want to sign up for Twitter TikTok, and take up more of my TikTok. time. Or yeah, t- uh, TikTok. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Don't do it right now. You got, you got, I small got kids. On, right. Do not do it. Right. You know, unless you want to video them and throw them on TikTok, then you're right. going to blow up because your children are adorable. So. Well, it's, it's so funny. I just met with my social media guy who's doing my social media now. And uh, we literally categorized all of my post types, like if it's personal yeah. or business related, or whatever. And yeah. all of my top, actually, what's really funny is my, my top engaging posts. Do you want to guess what my top engaging posts included? It probably your dogs. It your was, dogs. it was my goldens. <laughs> it was like anytime I would post a picture of my goldens. Yep. Those were the top posts, even over, over my little sweet little girls. So, uh, well, yeah, it makes sense. Logically, you know, it's not, I mean, when we connect with human beings and stuff, that's what we really, really long for is connection. So if, if I can connect with you on a personal level and I aspire to, you know, be on a, on your business level as well, that just makes it that much better. So I, I do think that it's really, really important, at least for me and my experience and stuff is be willing to put yourself out there, be willing to be vulnerable and stuff. It's not going to hurt you. You know, it's going to help you, you know, people are going to connect with you and stuff. And then if you're also here on a business level and they aspire to be there, then, You know, versus a guy that's just constantly, hey, I'm the guru, I'm the guy, you come, you want to know, come see me. And that energy is just kind of, you know, it's off-putting and stuff. So Yeah, I feel like they should be a car salesman. Yeah, Uh, so uh, you're, 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 it totally makes sense to me. I would have thought, you know, the, the dogs... And the, and the girls, I mean, come on, man, your kids and, I know, right? and dogs are amazing. That's they what's really so are. funny. Like <laughs> if I do a post about how to get to six figures, that's like the least, uh, yeah. engaged post. But, uh, here's my dog <laughs> sleeping on my couch in my office. Everyone's like, Oh, well, because amazing. people aren't, people aren't <laughs> thinking that way, Josh. They're yeah. not constantly thinking about, you know, how do I get to six figures? You know, there's entrepreneurs that want to do that, but, but in the big scheme of thing, you know, when you connect with a person and then they start 
going down your message rabbit hole, then it's like, oh, wow, this 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 might be my teacher. You know, this may be the person that's a good take point. Me to six figures. It's a good so. point. I need to hear that because I, I know there's such a, a good there's there's so many good things when you balance the different types of categories with yeah. social media, with personal, business, educational, yeah. promotional. Totally. They do need to be balanced because one of, you know, like if I just post a picture of my of my goldens, they're just gonna people are eventually going to be like, is he selling a calendar or something or yeah, what's, yeah. you know, like yeah, it is yeah. a good mix, but it adds that personal element that does totally. make people more human. Now, I think even more so on social media, this is really important. This actually leads me to something I was curious about with your guys's marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. How are you weighing in on social media versus like webinars and education and lives and things like that. Like, are you, do you are you going to try to do a good mix? Are you going to take one or two channels at a time? What's your approach, especially now with this rebrand of WP zone? Yeah. I mean, the reality in today's day and age in the online digital space is it's a lot of work. You know that, and you, you've got to really pick and choose where you feel like what's going to be you know, most useful and best for your audience and stuff. Um, Don't try to be everything to everybody and stuff. Kind of pick your lane, figure out where you want to be, where your audience resides, and then spend your energy and time there. So I love the concept of of teaching and helping entrepreneurs build businesses and stuff. Um, So I I do think webinars are going to be more prevalent in our future. Our website, obviously, we're going to we've always been a a pretty good content producing company in that, you know, sharing our knowledge, you know, teaching people. Plus, I understand the value of that from a search perspective. For like blogging and for like blogging. And yeah, yeah. Teaching people learn something. They want to know something, finding out the pain points. So I think blogging will continue to be a a very mainstay for us. Um, Webinars will definitely be much more prevalent in the future. And then the social platforms, we will share the information to all of the platforms so that our audience, if they're depending on what platform they're on, but we're not going to really focus on a specific social platform um, unless something just tells us to. But there's nothing like pointing us to right now. Oh, we need to focus all our energies and dive into TikTok even, for example. Gotcha. You know, so that for you, um, the TikTok thing is a little more personal as opposed to branded as WP Zone kind of thing. Absolutely. But I do see value in sharing knowledge there and helping people and, you know, building an audience there as well to bring into your ecosystem. Um, yeah. But also email marketing. That's going to be probably the thing that um, we're going to do even try to do a better job of, because I feel like that's an area that we're, even though we've been really, really great at user acquisition and, and we've done really well with email marketing and it's still our number one driving force for sales for our company. You know, I think, you know, there's so much because we try to focus on all of the things we're not doing as, as good a job on the things that are truly the most beneficial to our company and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think over the last year, evaluating that, seeing where the most value is and doubling down and focusing our time and energy there. And email is one of them. Website, email, and um, webinar type kind of teaching and stuff. Yeah. Like live streaming. I love live streaming and stuff. But, yeah, live is extremely powerful. Yeah, that's yeah. very well said. It's a, it's a great reminder for everybody. Like, don't get trapped in the rat race of doing all yeah, trans- social yeah, media it's, stuff. Where, it's a lot of work. I mean, really, social media is like the 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 top layer first of all social media is interruptive because people right. aren't searching for something necessarily maybe they Correct. are on tiktok depending on, that's the beauty eh. about youtube is like people are searching how do i do this on yeah, a wordpress totally. site and then they get your stuff they're primed they're ready right however social media i found is extremely valuable from the sense of like keeping you top of mind and like there's all a lot of times i'll be like oh i completely forgot about an email i got from somebody but seeing their story reminded me, right. go sign up for this or, or, or do something like that. Totally. So I think it all, it can all work together, but it does. I think a lot of people tend to put emphasis on the, like the social media aspect of marketing, but if it doesn't go anywhere, 
that's a problem for, so, right. for all the reasons we've talked about, like focus on the meat, focus on yeah. the big, the big things you're working yeah. on that are going to be the highest converters and then add in like the, the layers around totally. it. Yeah. And we hadn't even talked about what we're doing right now. Podcasting, you know, that's right. another major platform and stuff that's, that's truly beneficial for businesses and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I like that. We're having this, this, this is going to go, this will go live later in October, likely after we've had a lot of conversations around some of the different options for marketing, because this is just one of the most common questions I get. Where do I spend my time and how do I market my business? Yeah. And when totally. it comes to online, I think it's just so tricky because it's so dang overwhelming. It like, is. Personally, it's it's a lot easier to find a networking group and build those relationships or meetups. Your options are a little more limited, like people to people in person nowadays. Right. Whereas online, it's like, do you want to sign up for 17 services like social media services and forums <laughs> right. and groups like it's it is extremely overwhelming but I, I honestly i think they can all work in different levels for some but i think it's a matter i'm curious for you like getting out into more of the wordpress realm has that made you rethink or change up some of those marketing strategies like like no, maybe I, different I th groups on facebook or are, are wordpress no, people active elsewhere no, I, I think if if expanding out into WordPress as a whole, because obviously we started out as a a Divi company and a third party product creator for Divi, and then when we expanded out into the WordPress space, I think all it did was it it um, it confirmed that we were doing the right things on the right path with what was really important. So I'll share, I'll share with you a little story and, um, you know, in regards to this, when we launched out into WordPress. So obviously, you know, we acquired Divi space. God, I don't even remember when it was back maybe six years ago yeah, or I was something, say like, something 17, like that. 16 or yeah, 17. Yeah, probably right? around 16, 17. And we acquired Divi Space and we already had an insanely high ranking Divi website in aspengrowthstudios.com. Well, we acquired Divi Space and it just made sense. And Divi Space was not a high ranking website. Um, but we you know, transitioned all of our Divi content over to Divi.space because of the name and the brand. And it just made sense. And we transitioned Aspen Grove Studios to our WordPress platform where we focused on, on WordPress content because we knew we were going to want to eventually expand out into the WordPress, the greater WordPress as a whole, as opposed to staying niche with Divi. Mm. And I'll never forget, and it really brought home the value of content marketing and the power of content marketing because we were doing it anyways. We were putting out a minimum of at least one blog post a week, and it was tutorial-based, helpful information. It wasn't about, hey, come check our stuff out and come buy from us. It was, you know, hey, here's, this is how you do this with Divi, or this is how you do this with WordPress. And when they come to the site, they see, oh, wow, they've got plugins and themes. Maybe right. I can, it can be helpful. That's kind of been my model. Um, but I'll never forget when we transitioned the Divi content over to Divi.space, we wrote our first WordPress article can you guess what that article was, Josh? So you wrote a WordPress article? A on WordPress Divi Space? article. No, on Aspen Grove Studios. We decided oh. to turn Aspen Grove Studios into our WordPress, WordPress site. And Divi Space is the Divi. So our first article over here on Aspen Grove Studios on WordPress. Now, you got to understand, we were creating a lot of content in the WordPress space for Divi. Mm -hmm. So search engines were already seeing us as an authority. In I was just going to say, I would imagine, I would imagine it would be like best theme for WordPress or so. Like that. Listen to this. This is going to blow your mind. So it blew my mind. I don't remember when it was or when the year was, but um, we wrote an article. Matter of fact, WordPress has been out since 2003. And I want to say we wrote this article in, Maybe 2017-ish, so 14, 15 years later than WordPress. And the article we wrote was how to download and install WordPress. Uh, and there were like, I mean, there are 
tens of thousands of blog posts already on how to download and install WordPress. But I was like, you know what? We need to start producing some WordPress content. Well, let's just put helpful content. We had our, you know, our target, our list of content that we wanted to create. And I'll never forget it. We wrote this blog post, how to download and install WordPress and we, within a week, we were page one of Google for how wow. to download and install WordPress. I and think I it like, originally came out November of 18, it looks yeah. like. That's what the comments and, are saying. And I was like, holy crap. And I want to say we're like top 12 or maybe even still page one for it. But what it did for me was it made me realize the value of content marketing and mm. really how search engines work, you know, as far as like, valuable, relevant content for the end user and stuff. And what I saw was like, holy crap, Google sees us as an authority in WordPress because the only people that were on page one at that time for how to download and install WordPress was automatic and WordPress.org. Okay. Wow. And the, the company that owned and created, and then here's this, our little website, AspenGrowStudios.com. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. still today, I know you guys updated the article last year, but yeah. as of today, I did an incognito search. Yeah, under WordPress. And yeah, under WordPress is GoDaddy, and then Theme Isle, WP Beginner, and then Aspen Grove. So those are huge. <laughs> I don't, I'm not familiar with yeah. Theme but my gosh, yeah. WP Beginner and GoDaddy pretty much has some yeah. of the top ranking huge. page. But I mean, they have a, t- a massive team behind that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, and we're not. We're this little company right. that, you know, but it what just kind example. of really, it really, really opened my eyes to how, how search really works. And it's yeah. not about all of this stuff, you know, like the keywords and the titles and the this and the page and the this. It's just, it's about being valuable, relevant data to the searcher. And what made you whether wanna, or not. So what made you want to do that article? Uh, like, was Again, there too much was, thought or was it just like, yeah, let's just make a simple how to. Yeah. No, there was. There was intention behind it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we knew that we wanted to transition AspenGrowStudios.com to a WordPress, greater WordPress as a whole, because we had also acquired a second company, Potent Plugins, that was focused on um, WooCommerce plugins, you know, Product Sales Report Pro, Export Order Items Pro. We had some BB Press plugins that were like some of the most, you know, downloaded, used plugins in that space. So we just... We, we came up with a, a content calendar and we wanted to establish ourselves as WordPress. And in my mind, it's like, OK, well, how can we establish that? And we just we chose some of the most common, basic, you know, helpful things that we could create our own content on. Because, again, we're all on our own frequency and stuff. So if, if people resonate with, it doesn't matter that 10,000 other businesses or companies that already written how to download and, you know, right. WordPress and install it, the people that we're going to hear and read, we're going to get, we're going to get value from our article. So yes, yes. we were just intentional about choose, trying to choose some, some basic WordPress topics, but then also try to choose like, WooCommerce type kind of kind of content so that we could really start drawing that type of those type of users to our websites. And Another stuff. great lesson in content creation. Look at, yeah. you know, understand your your audience, your ideal clients and create some stuff on what's going to help them and start with a blog post, start with long form, then chop it up and go yeah. social. And don't be worried about, you know, Right. The That's thousand huge... other people that are already doing it. Right. Who cares? To... I have never done that. I've been at blinders on. Oops, no, I think that's that. one. Th- that's it. one reason I like. Uh, that's one thing I like about you, David, is like you, you, first of all, you don't seem to care. Second of all, you don't look at people like I, one reason I've always appreciated you from the early days when I met you is you were always really intentional about helping other Divi creators, even if they had the exact same product as you did and you were helping them. Like I remember one of the first times I met you, you asked how much some people made on black Friday. And I was like, Oh my gosh, David's just, he's just going for it. He's just asking (laughs) everyone what they made. And he's like, well, maybe next year you can double that or whatever. Like, that's awesome. (laughs) That's so cool. But yeah, it it goes back to the idea of like, maybe you could have researched the, how to install and download 
WordPress and felt like, oh my gosh, GoDaddy, WordPress, yeah. WP Beginner, we're never going to compete with them. But you yeah. did. And you didn't look <laughs> yeah, at people them. People get as, stuck yeah. in the, they go to the keyword analysis tools and they look at the rankings and then they have all these amazing tools now that'll tell you this one is very hard to rank for because you've got all of these people that you're mentioning and stuff. If you are intentional about, you know, just trying to help your audience and stuff, and it doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's amazing to me. It just blows my mind. I, I, I try to help people and I share and I educate them and I tell them, you know, don't worry about all that other stuff. And I think a lot of people are too focused on, that kind of stuff, those metrics. Yeah. There's stuff, also, there's you know? a lot of benefit with being somebody who is bipartisan and who isn't working for another, a big company. I, I was just right. having this conversation totally. with Wes McDowell on the podcast who was uh, live shortly before this one will go live. And he said the same thing. It's like, if you see a tutorial by Divi, by Elegant Themes, Right. you know you're going to have an unbiased opinion because yeah. that person is working for Elegant Themes. But if you see one of my tutorials about Divi, I'll Correct. tell you what I like about it and what I'm doing. And maybe one thing that I made could be better or give you my honest opinion. I think that's really true with probably what you've seen. Like, yeah, you could look at the tutorials from WordPress, GoDaddy, and some of these big companies, but this Aspen Grove Studios, these guys who, you know, they're just an honest <laughs> WordPress company, they'll probably tell you, uh, you know, uh, again, kind of a non-biased approach to something. Yeah, so I think there's a lot totally. of benefit. I say that to say there's a lot of benefit to like being small, being real, and just being yeah. you because you're not controlled by a bigger entity with the content you produce. Yeah, just be intentional and stuff. And, and, you know, money matters and you need you need to have some plan and some strategy and, you know, um, you know, that, that all of that stuff is important. I'm not saying, hey, don't ignore all these other things because there is value to all of these things. My point is that all of this stuff can get insanely overwhelming for a business owner. Focus on what you your genius and how you can help your audience and stuff and, and fit in all these things as you can and stuff, you know, as you grow, hire someone like you, I probably need to hire a social media person just for me, you know? Um, oh, I just, we just met the other day <laughs> and then we got the content calendar set up and I was like, I already love this. This is exactly yeah. what I needed instead of just winging it, doing an ad hoc, <laughs> spending my time tinkering around with reels and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, Dave, well, I was, yeah. I was going to ask you for a final thought, but man, I feel like that was a great message to end this off on. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Great. But thank you. Yeah. Thanks again for your time. And I really, like I said, I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know you years ago and then seeing your journey progress and what you guys have done with yeah. Aspen Grove and Divi space now WP zone. Are yeah. they all combining as one? Or are you yeah. going to keep Aspen? Yeah. So no, they're all combining. So we've had two websites, main, main e-commerce websites for, you know, a long time. And it's a lot of work. It's double the work, double the content, double the, you know, just, it's a lot of work. You're a double we, stuff Oreo of WordPress yeah. stuff. And we finally decided that's it. We haven't wanted to combine them because both of them, you know, each Aspen Grove Studios and Divi.Space, if you look at like the global quote unquote rankings, Ahrefs, SEM Rush, uh, Alexa, wherever you kind of take your, your global rankings, you know, we get a ton of organic traffic. Both sites are sit somewhere in the neighborhood of, 20,000th in the world out of billions. I mean, that may sound insanely high, 20,000, but when you think about billions of websites, it's really high, and I understand yeah. it. Um, and we just haven't wanted to, so we're bringing them all together now under the one brand of WP Zone, and, and it will focus on, obviously, all things WordPress and then Divi will be a big part of this site as well. So they're coming yeah. into one. They will cease to exist. You'll redirect. If you come to yeah, Aspen yeah. Grove Studios or Divi Space, it'll it'll go to WP. That zone, makes sense so. to me with, with where you're headed. Initially, when I saw the announcement, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was kind of surprised that you'd want to give up a domain like Divi Space for the yeah. Divi stuff. But it, it makes sense with particularly where you have had things and the challenges of running both and 
kind of where you're headed, keeping it all encompassing under WordPress. So yeah, and I yeah, think we have cool. a good enough understanding now to where we can not lose a lot of the authoritative ranking and, and the SEO value that we have. Right. So we've right. got a really good plan in place. So we're we're excited about the future and we've got some amazing stuff coming for the WordPress community and stuff. So, well, yeah. and it sounds cool. WPZone.co. Yeah. Obviously, I'm a fan <laughs> of .co. So don't confuse yeah. this, everyone, with ZoneWP.com. That is something different. Uh, I just I Googled it. I know what that is. I know. Okay. I just Googled <laughs> WP Zone, and that's what I found. Um, but you guys will outrank them here soon. Uh, so yeah, that's man, that's super cool. So I'm excited to see what the next chapter looks like here for you, David. Thanks for your time and for sharing what you guys have learned. Always transparent. Always appreciate that. And I, man, I appreciate personally your support for me. I mean, I, again, I, you probably said some stuff that you didn't even think about, but some of the things you said early on, particularly when I met you at the WordCamp in uh, 2017, I think it was, you said some stuff where I was like, man, that's so cool and encouraging that you, you know, saw something in me to really inspire me to just go for it. I mean, you told, you told me, you know, you started this Facebook group and there was a ton of other Debbie Facebook groups, but it's one of the largest out there still. So, uh, a lot of thanks to your inspiration and encouragement, man. Thanks, Josh. It's been, it's been great to watch your journey unfold and your family grow and your business grow. And it's been, it's been really kind of cool. So glad you're, the universe has put you know, us together in our lives and paths and stuff. So absolutely. Yep. Very cool, man. David, thank you. I'm going to go uh, take a picture of my dog and post it to get some likes. So uh, <laughs> we'll talk soon. <laughs> take care, Josh. Thanks, my friend. Hey, friends, it's Josh here. I just wanted to mention a couple quick things before you head out. First off, if you've been enjoying the show, please consider leaving a podcast review. I personally read all the podcast reviews. I love hearing your thoughts and feedback on the show. And it also really helps grow this podcast. You can do that easily if you go to joshhall.co slash podcast review, and you can leave a review wherever you listen to the show. And then I also wanted to make sure you know that for all the extras on every one of these podcast episodes, you can go to joshhall.co slash podcast. We have a post there for every episode, which includes full transcriptions, timestamps, and all the links and resources that we mentioned. So just go to joshhall.co slash podcast for all the extra goodies. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next episode.